Welcome. This is the GitLab Plugin Modernization Project Meeting. It's the 16th of June, 2023. Uh, topics I've got on the agenda, action item report, schedules and events, pending pull requests, and discussion on reviews and any results from those reviews, and a review of the mentor checklist. Anything else, Harsh, that you want to be sure we put on the list? Like the discussion of the project plan, like the discussion of the second milestones plan that I have. Oh, good. Have yes. All right. That. So let's put that very high on the discussion of plan for the second milestone. Good. Okay. About uh, the artifactory that we deployed, we don't really need that now because upstream support has come and we have a GitLab 4J 5.3.0 version, which has all the changes that we want. So we won't need that anymore. Wasted effort. Oh, good. Okay. So library is library. So let's say library is now, oops, library is now available upstream. Yep. And you said that was 5.3.2? 5.3. Zero. Five point three point zero. Okay, great. We won't be using the six point zero point zero now. Okay. The only difference was like um, the five point three point zero version has the least minimum support for Java eight, and the six point zero versions have now the minimum support for Java eleven. So I don't think so. We'll be using six point zero right now. Like I could have been the initial tester for that, but uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Well, uh, now, but. Doesn't 6.0 also require GitLab 15 or newer? It's got some. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's correct. Whereas 5.3.0 is GitLab, and I don't know what the older version is, but it's something older than 15. I think it's 12. 12 I think, okay. like, I don't really. Like, I'm not sure about it, so I don't know if you should be writing that. Right, but, and five, just from my education, five is the one we're already using. This is just a newer yep. version of five. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, all right. It just got released. Like, I pinged the maintainer twice, and he released it. So, yeah, I just messed up his head for some reason, but yeah. Excellent, very good. Okay. So, I think we've got good items for the agenda Shall we spend a minute on the action items before we get into the other things? So you you had a note on creating a UML, UML diagram, and I see in the Gitter chat that you've posted an image that looks, actually, I'm just going to drag it into the document because I don't think it'll yeah. hurt us to have a copy of it. Whoops. Okay, let's put it here. Like I can add it in project plan if you want. Also, that would be good. I just want to capture it here so that we've, whoops, capture it here to be sure we've got it. So oh, apparently I am unable to do drag and drop properly. Just a moment. Let's try this. Like copy paste it, right? Yeah, apparently I need to learn how to do <laughs> command line things like that. There we go. Okay. So what this says is, Draft diagram is available. Like is Basil joining or Chris? I don't see anyone else. Why? I don't I don't see them. I'll ping Basil and see if he's available. Let me ask Chris as well. Let's check. So like I'll have to discuss this with Basil before the PR is actually made. Like I I haven't really started working on the pull request yet because mm -hmm. I I got busy with the previous academics thing and like I was planning to make it much faster, but I just got slowed down by some random nonsense that I had to figure out. But yeah. Uh, understandably. And that was the right choice, right? That was absolutely the right choice. Chris, Graham, and Basel, we've started the session, today's session at, and let me get the Zoom link. Where is the Zoom link? Okay, there we go. And
Great. Okay. All right. So do you feel like this one, we should just call it done because it looks like a good diagram to me and you'll keep evolving it. Like, yeah, I'll be keeping, uh, I'll keep evolving it as I discussed with Basil and Chris, but yeah, you can just, uh, because I don't need to work on a, a lot more on this, uh, this uh, diagram, of course, like it will require some, some changes if it may have. So yeah, you can take it up. Great. All right. Excellent. And then I think let's put one more action item here, which is, and this is a new one. Mark test latest development branch interactively to match with, because you've tested it interactively and Chris has tested it and Harsh. Good. Okay, so that way next like week, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Like, should I go ahead? Yes, please. Yeah, so the Docker-based tests, like some of them are failing. And I knew that the, those those were going to happen because Basil said, uh, said that they should not be working that easily. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite leaving, leaving it for now. Like uh, if I complete the second milestone, no, not the second milestone. It's, it, it is a stretch goal, right? So if after completing the whole project, if I get the time, then I'll try doing it again. Like it's not that big deal, but the problem is that I'll have to set up the GitLab instance and just start the debugger. And it's a very slow process for me to test all those tests. That's why I'm just slacking off <laughs> for this. But yeah, like also the midterm, uh, because I'll be having the recorded session in the live live session of the midterm presentation that I'll be, that then uh, because of that, I'll be requiring to complete the second milestone beforehand like i think till the end of june i have to complete it because like some testing will be required for that recorded session to work as said by jen mark that mm -hmm. we'll have to test if it's going correctly or not so that's why for that reason also i want to take things a bit faster on the main goal project side as compared to stretch goal well and and that's i think that's important right so second milestone needs to be complete before your exams start, right? Before the beginning of his exams, so that you're, yeah, we're not dis yeah. disrupting your examinations. And that yeah. second milestone includes some form of presentation yeah. of the results. When, wait a sec, is this, is, am I talking about the right thing here? Yeah. Okay. So milestone, when the second milestone is completed, we'll have to do a midterm presentation related to it because it will be the major chunk of the project. Like if right. it's completed, then almost the project is on a very good track. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the idea there is we'll probably have to do that as a recording because rather than live, because li the, the date of the live session is during the middle of your examinations, right? Okay, good. And uh, I discussed that with with John Mark and Alyssa and Bruno and Chris yesterday, and they're aware of it. And they're trying. It looks like there may as be as many as two of the four contributors who will have to do it recorded. Yeah, like Vandit and me. Like he also right. got. <laughs> Metta. Well, uh, hey, your university, that's that's appropriate. You're you're supposed to be at the university. That's good. No, no, actually not. We we are suffering from an asynchronous semester due to COVID-19. That's why it is happening. Otherwise, things have been so, so smooth. Oh, like, oh, okay. So so the complication here is not a standard complication. It's it's truly yeah. exceptional due to COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why that's why I'm so slow with all these things that I'm doing. Okay, to pre-record their presentations. Good, all right. Okay, so what else? You you said we want to be sure we discuss the plans for the second milestone. What other points need to be on the second milestone? Or what are, are there other things that I need to be aware of? No, I don't think so. This is what the second milestone is about. 
okay. that will be migrating the webhook implementation to it's not like the webhook in i'm you i'm using the gitlab for this webhook implementation just to abstract away some lower level details it is hmm. not that as major as you think it would be like oh the the project plan the project of migrating from rest easy to gitlab for this is actually done because we are not using rest easy anyhow like it is not being used in the in the first pr that i made i actually migrated everything related to rest easy for to gitlab for j now i am trying to use the extra features that are provided by gitlab for j for handling the webhooks also so that we can abstract away from the lower level details and make the plugin more concise and modular like the main goal of the second milestone is to make the plugin more modular like i'll be discussing it more in the like the uh, the uml diagram that i shared like i'll be explaining it more uh, briefly great well so do do you want do you want to take the time now to do the explanation or would you rather no wait? anything anything else left uh the things that were on my list upcoming schedules and events we know about the the we know about the midterm presentation right and the midterm evaluation and i'm not aware are you are there any pending pull requests that need more review or discussion yeah the first milestone like i don't think so basil has reviewed it less uh, yet like um, i also enabled the tests in it that's why the docker based tests were failing others were passing so like good okay and tests tests are now passing there right so like the docker based tests are not passing right right and, passing. but the docker based tests have been failing for years if i remember <laughs> our last our last comment right yeah, they <laughs> they and they're completely outdated they're based on an ancient gitlab version right which yeah. which no one GitLab cares is. about anymore <laughs> okay good yeah and so we where we accept accept the long long dead container based tests and my assumption with those container based tests is it may be a full reimplementation because yeah. we have to get new container images right we need something based on gitlab 15 or gitlab 16 not yeah. not I think you said it was GitLab 8 that the original are yeah, based on. Yeah, I think on. it was GitLab 8. Yeah. Like, it's very old. Like, it's... <laughs> right, right. And that's... Testing against something that old is just not relevant, right? It doesn't matter to the users. If they're using that old version of GitLab, then they'll probably never upgrade to a new version of the plugin. Yeah, they need some help. Who right. uses GitLab 8? <laughs> exactly. Okay, and the other, let's see, review items. This is where Basil and I both need to do reviews. And the mentor checklist, I believe we already talked through that last week and saw everything on our list. We've got the midterm evaluation we've discussed and online presentations. Good. Okay. So I think we've completed the items for the meeting. You want to spend some time looking at the talking about the diagram? Yeah, I'll be, uh, I will be spending some time. Others did no, nobody has joined. So yeah, okay, that's fine. They they can refer to the recording for this. Like I'll, I'll explain it in detail now for that. Great. And regarding the regarding the pull request, like the first milestones pull request, Chris has uh, Chris has actually made a checklist for ticking what is wrong and what is right. So you can also refer that like. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks very much. Excellent. Yeah, it's kind of small. Can you just uh, sure. make it bigger? Absolutely. I don't Let's... think so people will be able to see it comfortably. How's that? Let's let's go full screen and move around. Is uh... that now i've got a Wait, scroll I, I i think i should share the screen maybe i'll show you some code also that so that oh, good. i could uh, just that's even better let's do that i'll stop sharing and then you can you can share so just a moment stop share go ahead wait a minute
Oh, is it visible? Uh, it is visible, ah. yes. Yeah, it's visible, right? It works, looks great. I can see the text, everything. Okay, so let's go to some files that I want to go to. Right? Okay, let me explain what's going to happen. Like, this is just a draft that I am going to explain to you guys. But yeah. So, once the GitLab sends a webhook request, we get the request to, uh, through the get done. Like we use the request and the response over here. It gets the project name, the stapler request of Jenkins, and the stapler response. And we use this through the get dynamic method that's here. This get dynamic method uses it, it logs it, and uh, let me remove this actually. It's not useful. Like what I'll be doing is I'll be setting up the webhook manager here. Like I've, I've commented out the code, but yeah, that's what I will be doing. I'll be using the webhook manager here to add the event for this request and add the listener. I have not uh, implemented the listener yet, but I'm going to, but it's going to add the listener here and the action like uncomment this. Why am I commented this? I think the action resolver is going to resolve it and also execute the response. Like I'm going to explain what's happening, what's going to happen. Now, okay, and now this, um, so so this yeah. is a get request and and protocol level it really is a get request. It's also it's a get as well as a post request. Okay, but but aren't get requests? I thought that get requests were not allowed to be state modifying. Isn't there a risk that this will cause state change? Should it should it be? I guess what I'm asking is should it purely be a post? No, it should not purely be a post. It like, should not. Uh, the audit yeah, the originally uh, the code had the guest and uh, get the, the get request and the post post request both implemented manually. So I don't think so get request is causing any trouble because it was okay. already there beforehand. I'm not I messing see. around with it. Okay, so it the 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 plugin already has a get request here. Yeah. And if yeah. if that get request that's that you're implementing does the same thing as it did before, it certainly wait, is wait, no wait, worse wait. than it was before. Wait a minute, like I am not going to change the get request thing at all. Right, got it. Okay. Because it's that like GitLab 4J does not provide us anything. Uh, GitLab 4J has nothing to do with the get request that we are using. It's just for telling Jenkins something has happened and telling GitLab something has happened. But it, it has nothing to do with GitLab 4J. GitLab 4J only handles the post request. And that's what I am going to, be, that's what I am going to change. This thing which I have written, it's, just what describing what, existing behavior. Yeah. yeah, because Chris said that uh, he wants to have a look just by the diagram what's going to happen in a second milestone. So I just, for the sake of completeness, that I like, that's what you can say. I did that. The major part is going to be the post request. That's why it's discontinued from here. Like there is nothing here. Okay. Okay. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yes. So yeah, the action resolver. Where I was. Yeah. This GitLab web hook. So the uh, webhook manager will be implemented here. And now we'll get into the action resolver. Now this is the action resolver and we'll create an, ob uh, we'll create an object about this. Now this has the get request already set up. The get request here. Now I'll show you the changes that I did. And uh, a lot of, uh, it, it also had a post request with the get request, but I'm, remo but I'm removing the post request because the GitLab 4J provides us the option of directly listening to the GitLab uh, through the GitLab API itself without manually implementing the post request. So I am removing that to make the plugin more concise to its code. The get request, the GitLab 4J has GitLab API itself doesn't really have nothing to do with the get request. So I'm not messing around it anything. Okay, so like not even changing anything. So so in this case, what you what you just said is that the post request that previously was implemented inside the stapler stapler framework is no longer yeah. required there because GitLab for J API provides it for us already. Yeah, it, it automatically triggers what is uh, like, I'll be explaining it more detailed. Like, okay. let's, let's get started. What's going to happen more? Like on the on post, like this method was used to get the, like we were getting the response to the request and through the request header, we were trying to check what was the thing, the request about, like was it about push hook or pack push hook or whatever. 
and right. after that we were deciding on the action now again using the system hook also like a web hook and the system hook both were implemented so system hook was also doing the same thing so this is the code which i'll be removing because i don't think so it's useful at all now and a concise version of it will be used now so what i am trying to say is where is the diagram yeah so this action resolver that i that i showed you just now it had the webhook listener webhook manager system hook listener and system hook manager implemented like that's mm -hmm. how it will be so you just saw the post thing i am replacing the post thing with the gitlab for j thing okay fine yes okay okay so the post request will be managed on the events for respective events on webhook and system hook the webhook will have will implement all these events and i'll show you uh, how i'm trying to do it and system hook will do this okay so action resolver i haven't comment i have did the comment or something yeah i cannot live code okay let mm -hmm. me explain i uh, didn't really i think i coded it but i removed it for some reason i can't really remember now so just let me explain what i am trying to say here so what we are trying to say here is oh no i have better options where is my lovely pepper j manager but let's now yeah that's what i am talking about like these thing like on push event so this method calls a webhook push that has event that has been received so what i'm trying to do is i'll be implementing the webhook listener by overriding the methods that are uh, by overriding the methods that are implemented in the gitlab for j to do what i want to do them when gitlab actually, uh, actually sends the webhook request so when gitlab will send the webhook request it will automatically trigger the on push event like suppose the gitlab sends a push request so a push post request then it will automatically trigger the on push event and everything that is residing in the on push event will start happening now instead of waiting for the post request like what we had to do previously was to check if it's what it was a post request and find out if it's a push push event or not and then do the action now gitlab for j has concise it and we can simply check if we can simply know if it's a push event or not and now we can move ahead without taking care of the low level details so are you with me i am yes so so really all of that logic that you showed as deleted is being deleted yeah. because it's implemented already in GitLab for J. And have exactly. you confirmed? Have you confirmed that this works as you expect with at least one of those one of those events, so that GitLab for J's API is really able to listen in when running inside a Jenkins controller like this? Like, uh, it's a good question. So I haven't really um, checked through my coding. Like I didn't really code it because I didn't have much time. But what mm -hmm. I did was I tried finding all the repositories on the Um, like on the GitHub, which use GitLab for J, because GitLab for J is being used in other repositories also. So they are also going to implement the same thing that I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So right. I test, I check them to find if they are doing exactly what I think they should be doing, and I think like I'm I'm right. I also check the branch. I also check the branch source plugin for that, and branch source plugin also uses the same thing, the same logic that I'm trying to use in a slightly different way. But yeah, it's doing the same thing. So, so I think so I'm on the right track. So the GitHub branch source is already using GitLab, no, GitLab for J's web. Source. Sorry, I said the wrong thing. The GitLab branch source is already using this webhook concept and yeah. on on XXX event to do its yeah. work. So we already know yeah. there's at least one plugin that's successfully using it yeah. inside Jenkins. Yeah. Very good. That's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. so i i actually refer to two three pro, two three different projects for that to make sure that i am on the right track so that's what i thought like i'll try coding it but i didn't really have much, that much time so i had i had to take some shortcuts okay to get there so related to system hook and web hook so what was i explaining yeah both of them have similar kind of events and that's why both of them are dependent on the same kind of actions also like the push build action merge, merge request build action all these actions are based on both of them so i'll explain you a bit about that where is the action like wait i have to explain something more before i try doing that so is all right yeah yeah so 
Yeah, I'll be uh, showing you the difference between the webhook and the system hook thing. Like why are the different uh, in their implementation, in their manual implementation, I must say. So simply in the, uh, wait a minute. Oh, that's nice. Simply on the on post, we are saying that it's calling simply the merge build action with request body of the request and the token header, fine. But on the system webhook thing, it's trying to make a JSON tree out of it. Like it's using the utility of JSON util and trying to make a JSON tree, like it has used a JSON node for it. And then it is calling the same classes, but with the JSON tree instead of the JSON itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think so. So it's, it's constructing a tree of JSON objects and passing the JSON objects instead of expanding them into the actual jank JSON literal yeah, text. So, so they are using some different things there. And regarding the get request body, we don't read it. We don't need it because the request, uh, the request body was required so that we could read the tree. But now as GitLab 4J has provided a convenient method to do it without getting into all this ruckus using simply using the events that it has because the webhook manager actually extracts the payload and does everything that every logic that it is implemented here. So it is not really required going to the actions okay yeah so you can see here it's trying to read the action like it's getting the json node this is for the this is for the alternate this is alternative constructor for the system hook and this is for the web hook it's it mm. gets simply it's, it's simply json it's and, and it's the json node so they are the different implementation, but the same push build action object is being created that, that will be tested for the compatibility with the previous versions and will be executed simply on the based on, uh, what, what's that called? Uh, so, yeah, it will simply be executed when the webhook action is being called. And other than this, the SEM not, uh, notifier does not really require, like this won't require any change and it's what it is trying to do is it, it gets a trigger notifier object and not push event, not push event on post. What is what this push event? Yeah, like this. This is what it's going to do. It, it's going to trigger a on post event, which is here. Like I'm taking example just of push, but it's similar for all, like all four of them. Right. Fine. So it's going to go to the on post, which is here in the GitLab push trigger. Now on post will receive the push event. So I think I should be explaining one more thing. Yeah, the webhook thing and the webhook and the system hook, both are using the same build actions and the, the build actions will send the respective events like the push event to the on post method, which will handle the things afterwards related to this. Like one more thing that I should be explaining to you guys is why am I where is it? Like, yeah. Why am I implementing the webhook, uh, webhook listener and the system hook listener in the action resolver itself instead of the GitLab push trigger? I have reasons for that. Like, I could have implemented in the GitLab push trigger, but because it actually looks better in the GitLab push trigger to do that, but I'm still doing it in the uh, action resolver because I want to call the build actions, which I'll be not able to do if I try doing it in the GitLab push triggers because build actions call the push triggers, not vice versa. So what, so to retain the flow of the program, what it was before, so as to create less noise while the development, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to retain the complete flow of the program just by adding the tidbits of GitLab for J in between to reduce the content of the code and make it more concise, but still following the same pattern that it was following beforehand. That's what I was trying to do. Okay. That sounds very reasonable to me. So it's an intentional series of small steps that you're taking. Each one yeah. still should work and should be in atomic in the sense that it's, it works by itself within the existing code base. I like that very much. Yeah, so like the whole idea of the migration is the users should not feel anything has migrated at all. Like that's my idea. They should not know what has happened. Just 
magic happened. That's that's what I'm trying to do. Great. So, so the on post lie. Yeah, it will receive the on post and it will distribute it to the individual handlers. Now, like these things, these actions, I didn't really explain because like I am not changing anything. So yeah, that's just for completeness. So it goes to the handlers. Where is my push build action? GitLab push trigger. Yeah, GitLab push trigger. So as you can see, it initializes the it initializes the handler. And yeah, one one more thing, one more thing. The filters. Yeah, how can I forget them? The filters. I am not going to change filters much because when I when I was researching about the filtering options provided by the GitLab for J, I actually mm -hmm. found that it is providing the branch filter, but it's not providing the name filter and the regex space filter, which is kind of a bummer. Like it is not giving me the complete thing. Like I was not able to find more about it. So I think I should be using the filter. And another reason is like um, in the readme files, the user can set the branch filter type or the name filter type manually, programmatically. So I don't want to affect that also. That's why I'm not going to change this also. Even okay. GitLab 4J provides it somewhat, but I'm still not going to change it. I'm going to use the filter that are provided by uh, provided by the plugin, the old plugin itself. So you can check that all. You can check that also if it's the correct approach or you want to do something else. Like I'm that, open to advice. That makes sense to me. You're choosing to to retain as much of the retain the existing functionality, right? Not risk disturbing yeah. the existing filter yeah. functionality. Makes that makes yeah. good sense. Okay. So like the next will be the handlers will be called, but it will take the event instead of the hooks. And that uh, that is also an important thing which I'll be explaining now. Like pending builds handler and webhook trigger handler. Yeah, webhook trigger handler. This, what, what it was doing was, where is my change? What it was doing was, it was extending the webhook. Instead of extending the webhook, it will now extend the events because we are not extracting the things manually through the hooks. Instead, we are relying on GitLab for J to provide us the relevant events with the information that has been extracted using the webhook manager. So I think it will not extend the webhook now and it will instant extend the event now. So in now the abstract is, webhook, oh, yeah. is that a risk to, are there people who are dependent on that old interface? Are there consumers dependent on the, on the, the previous, the current definition that will be broken by a change to, to that that definition is this webhook trigger handler used outside of the plugin, for instance. Webhook trigger handler outside the plugin, but like it's a nice question. Like I haven't really thought about it. Well, so this could so, mess up, but yeah, I don't think it should. But I have to think. Okay, well, so so jump back to the place where you were talking about switching from extending one thing to extending another. Yeah, here. Yeah, okay. So instead of instead of extending a webhook, you're it's now going to extend an event. And so that yeah. that is a compatibility change, right? That's a yeah. that's a change and it could be breaking if someone depends yeah. on this API, but yeah. I so it's it's probably it, it is worth it for you to do an investigation to see if yeah. there there is anyone outside this plugin that is dependent on the public interface webhook trigger handler. Yeah, I think I should be thinking about this more a bit more because like we were using the webhook previously. Uh, like what I think we were trying to do is we were using the previous webhook. Like it was a manual webhook. Uh, let me show you. Mm -hmm. what it is yeah that webhook thing it's simply this like it it is a manual infrastructure of the webhook that we're trying to use but we have to extract information out of the webhook you you saw that json thing we don't right. need it anymore because gitlab for j already provides us we don't need to convert it into json and using the jackson uh, jackson config thing like what was that name i forgot about it json jackson i think we don't right. need that anymore we well, already have the information provided by GitLab for J to us easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. So, and when I look at, I just did a search on with GitHub search engine and the webhook trigger handler, as far as I can tell, is only used in the GitLab plugin itself. Then yeah. there is a, what looks like copied code 
using the same thing in the in another plugin, but that other plugin has has the code in an entirely different location. So so it's perfectly okay because here yeah. the webhook trigger handler is inside a, a JGit specific package, right? Or not a JGit in a inside of a GitLab specific package. Yeah. Yes, there it is. Or GitLab for J A P no. Scroll, could you scroll up to the top so I can see the package name? Yes. Okay. So it is this is very much inside a GitLab plugin specific package. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. So we'll be extending the event. Like that's what I know. Like, of course, if any problem, just ping me on the GitHub channel. I'm there. Right. For of course. Related to the abstract webhook trigger handler. Now we'll be using the events. So as we are using the events, this all things will be changed, of course. Um, where is that thing? Yeah. Yeah, related to the handlers. Uh, it will use the web events instead of the hooks and uh, cause data, my lovely little cause data. So this cause data, this humongous thing needs to be changed because it's what, what it's trying to do is it's trying to collect the cause data for all possible events in a single file which is not maintainable like i don't think so it's a good practice to do it because it creates a lot of mess like you have to get in get things null and get things non-null which is not good like we have extra things which we don't even want for that event so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to break it into different cause data classes and i'll be using gitlab webhook class for like uh, setting up the thing to work fine like orchestrating the thing correctly that's what my approach for the cause data changes will be. And the handlers that we have, these handlers will populate the respective cause data using the events that I have. Like I'll be using the push event that is provided by GitLab for J to me to mm -hmm. extract the information of the payload and populate the cause data, the respective cause data instead of using the hook. So that's what I'll be doing with the handler. And after that, I think everything will be sorted. Like the, I just intercepted GitLab 4J in between the things to make the plugin more concise and the pattern is still the same. So I think the plugin should work end to end after this changes. Fine? Yes, fine. Thank you very much. So did you understand what I was trying to say? I think I do. Well, and we've got the recording, so I can refer back to it if I have further questions. Okay. Nice. Okay, how to close the screen share? Uh, there's a, uh, here, I'll just, I'll click the stop sharing. Yeah, I found that. Oh, you did. Good. All right. Harsh, any other topics we need to discuss? Mm. about closing the draft PRs. Yeah. So like I made the draft PRs, like two drafts, the first draft and second draft PR. I think I'll be closing them after the review is done for the first milestone and related to the draft PR that I made to the GitLab API plugin, like the maintainer of the GitLab 4J plugin also mentioned me over there that like it was some changes and we decided that 5.3.0 version will be used instead of the 6.0.0. So that draft PR I'll also be closing. Right. So, Mm, nothing else like i think i've covered almost everything that i did this week like i did a lot less things than required but yeah whatever well thank you thank you very much for your progress and we'll we'll talk again in a week i've got reviews to do basil's got reviews to do i've got some interactive testing to do so looking forward to making further progress in the coming week yep all right thank you thanks very much Bye. Bye-bye.